gorgeous people. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Friday or that your week's been great. Um, jumping in with today's video, definitely, on why people get stuck. Sorry, just straightening <laughs> that up a little bit. Um, so why do we get stuck? Um, what keeps us in those same patterns, those same uh, situations, whether that's um, you know a job that we don't like or love, uh, whether it's a relationship, whether it is a health condition, um, all of those things, you know, or, or even around money. What is it that keeps us really stuck? And and how, what can we do to kind of overcome that? So this is what we're jumping in, talking about today. There's nothing more frustrating. Good morning, Di. Say hello if you're jumping on here. Uh, always love to um, obviously say a big hello. Uh, hey, Liz. Great to have you on, honey. Um, so definitely, like looking at these particular reasons will help you to create a life of your dreams, will help you to move past situations that perhaps have frustrated you or overwhelmed you or annoyed you or irritated you for such a long time in your life. Um, and it really is the key to getting unstuck by just becoming aware of these things and asking yourself some of these really powerful questions. So I've actually written down notes today. I rarely do that, but I just, I felt that this was so super important to dive in and get super clear on. So number one, the number one reason why people stay stuck is they keep focusing on what it is that they don't want to create. Uh, so it's like, it's like keep focusing on reality. Now you might go, well, how do I not do that? Simply because like reality is reality, right? And it's like, but we are so willing as human beings to keep talking about what's not working. Um, and often there's actually side benefits to that as well, which is my number two point as to why people do stay stuck. So it's really um, getting clear on what it is that you do want and keep Keeping your eyes focused on that because ultimately when we're focused on what it is that we don't want we keep doing the same thoughts we keep having the same beliefs we keep showing up in the same way which keeps creating the same results so perhaps if you're stuck around money or um, you know you're wanting to create or grow your business um, but you keep focusing on oh my god I'd never have enough money um, you know I'm a failure at this or this is not working for me then guess what how are you going to show up how are you going to be communicating to your community or to your clients with absolute certainty, love and confidence. Like that's going to be completely out the window. Hey Kylie, great to have you on, hun. Um, so super important. Number one, get super clear on what you want and refuse to look at what reality is. Um, now, some people also might say that sticking, you know, putting your head in the sand or... Uh, Honestly, guys, it is how I've changed every aspect of my life. When I am stuck and I'm like, ah, this is not working or this is not the way that I want. Good morning, Erica. Um, it's so great to have you on here. Um, when, when I'm doing all of that stuff, I've literally had to ignore my reality as it currently is and literally focus on what it is that I'm wanting to create and get into the vibe or feel if that was already true, if I was already living that way, how would I feel? What would I know? What would I believe? And they're quality questions to ask yourself simply because if the more that you step into that, then you start to become the identity that's already outgrown or solved the particular problem. So super powerful to do that. Hey, Danielle, lovely to have you on and Linda. Um, so number one, we've got to focus on what it is that we want. Number two, we've got to get clear. What are the side benefits to staying stuck? Now you might hate me for saying that or dislike me for saying that or feel triggered um, about me saying that because you're like, well, there's no bloody side benefits. <laughs> there's no benefits to feeling like this. This is awful. This is terrible. I am telling you right now, if you are stuck and have been stuck for a long time, there is absolutely a side benefit or an unconscious need that's being met through keeping that same behavior. Um, frustrating, I know, but once you identify this, it is going to clear things up for you. And often for most people, it's the fear of making the change. It's the fear of the uncertainty, even though you may not be in a situation that you're liking, but the ego survival mind desperately, desperately, desperately wants certainty and security. And it believes that it can obtain that consciously or unconsciously through the familiar. So even though it might suck or it mightn't be what you want, um, if it feels familiar, it feels safe. Even 
woman in an abusive situation. And, um, you know, I, I don't like saying that, obviously, but honestly, it's the truth. Um, and it's one of the most important things to really get clear on what is the side benefit? What need am I trying to meet by staying in this situation? Is it that I, um, I, I want approval from others? Is it that I'm looking um, to try and, and, and get you know, certain type of love? Is it that uh, I'm I, I'm so scared that I won't be able to take the leap if I'm wanting to grow my own business or start my own business and I think that I'm gonna fail. So it keeps you safe by staying in that same situation. So really, really clear to, um, or really important to get clear on what are the side benefits of staying stuck. Now ask yourself that, like what are the reasons, um, why would I not choose what it is that I'm wanting? That's a great quality question to ask yourself, again, to get clear on this. Um, and number three is um, feeling that you're not enough, uh, or sorry, well, that can also be a factor. So not feeling worthy of, not feeling deserving of. Um, it wasn't what I was gonna say, but it's a very relevant point. So it's kind of funny how that's kind of come up, um, but it's not feeling worthy of or deserving of. Now, again, that's just the ego survival mind. And it just means that you're out of alignment. You haven't fully lined up emotionally with knowing and believing that you are 100% lovable, worthy, deserving, of everything and that's what your higher self already knows to be true and the discord or the disempowerment that you feel is just the difference between your ego survival mind and what it believes or that inner critic and what it's telling you and what the truth of your heart or soul um, or highest part of you actually knows to be true the worse it feels around that so if you really feel unworthy or really feel undeserving it's just that that's further away um, from what your inner being really knows to be true and you couldn't feel so bad if your inner being or your higher self was not holding that ultimate truth for you. So that's pretty cool to know and to understand. Hey, Anne Marie, great to have you on. Um, what I was going to say is sometimes the other reason why we stay stuck is that there is not enough necessity either internally or externally um, to uh, to actually move or to create the change. So sometimes, and when I say internal, that means that we have not created enough necessity, not enough reason why we need to change this or why this actually needs to be different. Um, and it's a really, really important point to make. Now, sometimes that comes from an external environment. If you're surrounded by people that are having the same problem or having the same issue, then sometimes it can and really stretch us to actually outgrow perhaps some of those relationships or some of those friendships or move away from that situation. Um, and so it feels like, you know, everybody's wanting to kind of pull us back down or, or keep us, um, you know, at the, and I don't mean in a judgmental way by a different level or anything else, but to keep us stuck in that same situation because it will trigger them by you overcoming this because then it means they've got to face their fears or they've got to confront. It's never about you when that's actually happening happening if your external environment is not supporting you in making healthy um, changes it's just it's triggering their own fear and their way of doing it or dealing with it is manipulation and control even at a subtle level by sending those nuances or those messages of oh you know you're too good for us now or just any of that stuff that's really coming from a place of insignificance or fear um, driven motives and so that can really be challenging so you know investing um, or creating a powerful peer group around you that influences you in a positive way that can uplift you where everybody's growing and you know there's people further down the track can help uplift you and elevate you very quickly um, just through surrounding yourself with those types of people as well hey Tracy great to have you on if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to jump in um, and um, and type a question below as well. So um, internal and external necessity is absolutely important. Often we will do more for others than what we will for ourselves. Um, if you have not got a powerful why, I can promise you there won't be the drive, there will not be the motivation, there will not be the inspiration or the daily call to become more or to step up or to confront those old behaviors or to confront some of those ego fears um, that can come up you'll just keep pivoting in the same spot particularly if you feel like oh well it's just for me you know I'm not really worth it or whatever when you have other human beings depending on you I can tell you your external necessity 
goes through the roof. It's one of the reasons why I became a coach and why I was so passionate about becoming a kinesiologist and a coach because I knew my internal necessity to live and walk my life with integrity was absolutely imperative to me in order to create change in my life and to continue stepping up and to continue elevating. Now, the, my biggest reason why when I first started on this journey was I wanted to be a powerful role model for my kids. Um, that was it. Like, And I didn't love myself enough to make the changes for myself at the time. But sure as hell, I was never going to let my kids grow up with a mum that hated herself, that felt depressed, um, that was struggling financially, that was not feel, following her dreams, that was not living a life that she loved, um, and was really, um, you know, just devastating, devastating herself every single day by her own internal um, critic. Um, so, you know, overcoming that, that was my most powerful reason why, because of that external and the internal pain that I was also feeling. We're moved so much more from pain than pleasure. Tony Robbins talks about this so much in terms of we will do a lot more as human beings to get out of pain than what we will to move towards pleasure. So we need to kind of tap into both of those. Now also as human beings, we have an innate ability to numb out or to suppress or to ignore or to deny our own pain and say, oh, it's really not that bad. Oh, it's okay. It doesn't really matter. I'm not really that happy, but it's okay. You know, it's a job. It's a relationship you know oh they care about me like all of those things that will keep you keep you keep you keep you stuck the more that you deny your own pain you've got to get real and honest with yourself in terms of what is this costing you what is it costing your um, life what is it costing your relationships what is it costing your kids what impact is it costing you in terms of other people that you're impacting or influencing like the more that you stack that and it doesn't feel good to do that guys but holy it's gonna move you um, and really get you into action and have you stepping up to that next level version of yourself, but also allow yourself to be pulled by the pleasure, be pulled by the visualization of what is this going to be like? This is gonna be amazing. How's it gonna to feel to be living the life of my dreams? How's it gonna to feel to have that great relationship or that great new job or that great new business where I feel like I'm making a massive impact in my life or truly making a difference? So all of those things go together to create a greater internal and external necessity. Hey Chris, great to have you on. Hey Katie, lovely to see you on here. And Christy and Sandra, lovely to have you on here. Um, so great to see you all. Um, so lastly, the last thing that can really stop people and keep people stuck is fear. Um, and fear is a call for courage. Fear is a call for love. It's really living in our ego survival mind that keeps us stuck. Like I said at the start, it is wanting, desperately wanting that certainty, the security and the safety. And the ego survival mind believes that it can obtain that or get that from um, keeping things the same, from keeping the familiar, because you know how to handle that, right? You know how to deal with that because you've probably been doing that for a while or a long time. And so it's like, yeah, I know it doesn't feel good, but you know, I, I know that, you know, I can handle that. I don't know if I can handle this fear. I don't know if I can handle these changes or I don't know. It feels really uncertain. It feels really scary. So fear, and generally there's three fears that come up and Brendan Bouchard shares a beautiful way of looking at these, um, which I absolutely love, which is number one, fear is fear of loss. I'm gonna lose something. If I make this change, there's something I'm scared that I'm going to lose. I'm gonna lose my time, or it's going to be a financial investment, so I could lose my money, or I'm going to lose my energy, or I'm going to lose something that I value. And so we're so focused on the fear of what I could lose by making this change, rather than thinking and flipping that fear and inviting courage in by asking ourselves, what could I gain? If I made this decision, if I stepped forward, if I became this next level version of myself, what could I gain from actually doing that? The second uh, biggest fear is fear about the process. Oh my God, it's gonna be hard. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. Oh my God, you know, I, I, I just feel so stuck around this. I, I don't think I can move through this particular process or this process is gonna be so hard and so confronting. Um, often this can stop people from, you know, where it feels very overwhelming to feel like they've got to put everything into place 
place when they're making changes. I see this a lot, particularly in health, where somebody feels like, oh my God, I've got to be completely perfect in all areas. I've got to exercise every single day. I've got to drink enough water. I've got to eat right. I've got to take all my supplements. I've got to meditate every single day. I've got to journal. I've got to do like all this stuff. And you never start because the process becomes so overwhelming that you just go, oh, it's all too hard. And if I can't do it perfect, well, then I've just failed. And often, you know, that is one of the biggest things that's why people get stuck is because you're not being kind to yourself, guys. Like, how could I enjoy the process instead? Oh, I'm just going to pick one of those things. And I'm going to work on that every single week. Um, I'm going to, until I get really good at that, once I'm solid at that, then I'm going to move through to the next thing. Often we can say, you know, I'm just not confident in that area. I'm not a confident person. I say, but yes to that. Are you confident in tying your shoes? Are you confident in riding a bike? Are you confident in walking? All of those things you never knew how to do when you were first born. You had to learn those things and you had to become confident in those by doing those things enough that you actually have full confidence in how to actually do that now. And quite often I'll say to people, are you confident in brushing your teeth? And they're like, Think that I'm asking a stupid question, which it sounds stupid, but in reality, it's just that you've done that enough times that you actually know how to do that. If you've ever watched a child learning how to clean their teeth themselves, it's actually quite hilarious. And <laughs> I still remember even, you know, with my younger kid and like just awkward, um, but you know, like my kids and myself know how to clean our teeth very well these days, <laughs> simply because we've done it enough times where you've built that muscle, you've built that confidence and people forget that and then beat up up on themselves or just attach I'm not a confident person which totally derails you and totally takes away your courage and your ability to be able to get things wrong make mistakes fall over um, you know and pick yourself up and keep going again hey Chris great to have you on he hey Dion and hey Jacinda lovely to see you guys on here um, so really, really important, guys, um, is to just know that sometimes the process is a bit confronting, um, but how could I enjoy the process? Perhaps if you're starting a new workout regime, um, you know, I know for me, like if I haven't trained and it's it's very, uh, you know, this hasn't happened for a long time because I do train on a, um, <laughs> thanks very much, Dian, great that it's hitting the spot too, honey. Um, you know, if I haven't trained at the gym for a while and, you know, for me, that's that's pretty rare these days um, simply became because I've become so consistent in you know so many of those habits um, because I focus on my quadrant two habits which are important but not necessarily urgent um, but they're the key factors to my life running well and things going well for me um, however um, <laughs> kind of digressing um, if I hadn't have worked out for a while and I go to the gym I am sore as buggery right so maybe you just want to ease into it and maybe you want to like take along your favorite music where it totally up levels you maybe you want to think about or focus on what's it gonna feel like when you've created that change in your body or the stronger that you feel or the leaner that you feel or the more confident that you feel in your body just from moving your body every single day so ask yourself how can I enjoy the process or how could I create this so that I enjoy the process um, much more than you know oh my god I'm scared about the process or this is gonna be daunting or this is gonna be confronting now I did put a post the other day um, you know I had a bit of fear coming up around starting my new training block with my new PT um, I felt really daunted um, and I was I had to do uh, 25 deadlifts uh, by three um, three lots of sets, so it was 25 reps of um, you know 50 I think it was 50 kilo deadlifts, um, and so that was 3.75 ton in like three to four minutes, and I was honestly sh shocked at how easy I actually did that. But did I have fear beforehand? You know, I was definitely exhausted at the end of it, um, but I got it done, and I was so bloody proud of myself. Now, if I'd really let that fear overcome you know overtake me and my body and just go oh no I don't think I can do it you know that um, really breaks down that self-belief it breaks down the self-confidence even if I'd had a go at it and I didn't get the whole way through and there's some other sets or some other training that I've done um, where I didn't hit the mark in fact I was like so far from the mark and yet I can be kind and loving to myself because I know the process is about progression not about perfection and that's a really key point um, to take on board hey Michelle lovely to have you on uh, blessings Chris always a pleasure um, hey Kayla Hey Kate, great to have you on. 
So our last fear to deal with um, is that there is a fear that this is going to be worse than rather than better than what it currently is. So there's a fear that if I do this thing, even though I'm putting in time, even though I'm doing all these processes, I'm putting in effort, I'm putting in energy, perhaps I've financially invested in this, that it's not going to work out. And in fact, things are going to be worse than what they currently are. And how we flip that on its head is to come back to what if this is actually the answer to creating the dreams of my life? What if I actually embrace this and learn from this and step forward in a way? And even if this isn't the key nugget that gets me to where I want, man, I'm going to learn, I'm going to grow from this, and I'm going to have even more information about what works and what doesn't for me. So really, really key and important. One of the biggest things that holds us back from creating those changes is that fear that it's not going to be as good as what it currently is, um, or it's going to be worse than what it currently is. And so nobody likes to go backwards, but if we don't have the courage to implement, to create change, to step into and build that muscle of courage, self-belief and confidence through overcoming those fears, then guys, you're never going to get to where it is ultimately that you want to end up. This is the dance for our human potential because the ego survival mind wants to keep you safe. It wants to keep you fitting in, belonging, playing small, playing it safe, all of those things and our human potential, our heart, our soul, the largest part of ourself absolutely wants to soar. It knows that anything is possible. It knows that it can have, be, do, create anything and truly live the life of your dreams. And guys, these days, you know, 95% of my life, I can say I consciously, very specifically and consciously decided, chose and created. And it's a very powerful thing to be able to do for yourself because when you can come from that level of unshakable confidence and unshakable self-love I can promise you even when there's setbacks even when there's hard decisions to make even when you feel like you're failing you've still got that as your steady foundation to fall upon and so there's a, like a lot of surface emotion um, you know some doubts fears insecurities I get anxious as hell sometimes that's cool that's okay it's just feedback for me that I'm completely out of alignment with with what it is that I'm wanting to create. I'm focusing more on what I don't want or what I'm fearing is going to happen when I'm feeling anxiety than what it is that I do want to create and how I'm going to move forward. So all of it is just beautiful, beautiful learning. And the more that we stretch into that human potential, the more that we stretch into becoming the best next level version of ourselves. And there's always another level, always another layer. And that's not because we're not enough as we are. If you focus on, um, you know, nature, and I think nature Nature is just beautiful in so many ways. Good morning, Nolene and Kelly. Great to have you guys on here. Um, nature always lets us know, you know, nature's about expanding. Nature's about growth. It's not that a seedling is worth less than a tall gum tree, um, but nature... It, just innately wants to grow and wants to become more. And I truly believe that our souls um, are exactly the same as that. Our soul evolution is about over like overcoming um, and, uh, and moving past all of those limiting fears and those limiting beliefs. And you know, I heard a, a great statement once um, from one of my mentors. She said, it's wearing a limiting belief or keeping a limiting belief or holding on to a fear that's keeping you stuck is like wearing a brown coat over your beautiful, sparkly shiny self um, we dull ourselves down so much because that's what the ego is telling us it's saying I'm not enough I can't do this I'm gonna fail everybody's gonna laugh at me um, what are people gonna think of me people are gonna judge me people are gonna think I'm too great like there is a plethora of stuff that our inner critic or our uh, ego survival mind will be feeding you and again it's like that two dog story you know like there's always the fear and there's always the love which which animal is going to survive, which part of you is going to survive, it's whichever one that you give the most energy or that you feed the most with your thoughts and your beliefs and keep anchoring into you. So if you're feeling stuck, chances are you've fed a lot of the feared animal inside of you or the fear, I don't like to say, you know, <laughs> like dogs, but there's a story about two dogs, you know, which, which one's going to survive and it's the one that you feed the most. Um, so again, we need to check in with ourselves. We need to remain accountable um, to what 
aspect of self are we feeding? Are we feeding the love? Are we feeding the possibility, the um, expansion, the growth, the who we get to become, the how's it going to feel when I'm living the life of my dreams or I'm so freaking proud of myself for stepping beyond and through this belief or this um, fear or having the courage um, to do something that I really love and it will liberate so much energy in you guys when you do this. Um, I felt it again and again and again for myself because fear creates resistance. Fear feels like this. It's like this push-pull energy. I want to, but I can't. I want to, but I can't. It's like having hands in your back. Somebody's trying to push you forward and you're naturally resisting. That takes up so much physical energy. It takes up so much mental energy and it takes up so much emotional energy. And what if you could unleash that? What if you take away the fear and you can just move so freely through life, feel completely liberated. And again, you're going to bump up against those next level things um, because fear is all always present, um, particularly, you know, the limiting belief, the next limiting factor that stops you from moving or progressing, it's just the same work again. So the more times you step through your fear, the next time, then you get to dance with fear and you go, oh, hello, old friend, you're here again. And instead of it being an adversary that you've got to push against, you're just like, hey, thanks so much for showing up. Thanks so much for trying to keep me safe. I'm just going to pour love into you. So pour love into your inner critic, pour love into the aspects of you that feel scared or frightened or afraid, which is generally our inner child um, that's been wounded or is scared it's going to be abandoned, rejected or unloved. Um, and so when we pour love into those parts of ourselves, again, it's going to elicit greater courage to step into that next level version of yourself. I truly hope that that served you guys this morning. Please like, love or share that with anybody that you feel um, it could really help to move beyond. Um, I do sound a little ranty. I'm feeling quite passionate about this. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Danielle. I really uh, appreciate your comments, hon. Good morning, Jen. Lovely to have you on here. Uh, thank you so much, Erica. That's so beautiful. And um, it's, you know, like we're all human, guys. We're all so human. And every single time you decide for yourself, you help to create that inspiration for another. Um, I was sharing with my Inner Circle Mastermind mind group um which is such a powerful um, group and they all support each other by stepping up and into that next level influence for each other. Um, they inspire each other by what they're doing or how they're showing up and um, and it's just such a, a beautiful group. I dive into all sorts of stuff like relationships, like self-love and confidence, like purpose, career, passion, business, um, you know, feminine, masculine energy, manifestation, money, um, goal setting, like all of that stuff, fun and adventure and travel. It is such a powerful, powerful training. Um, it is a 12 month program, which means that you get to deep dive into all of those aspects of your life and really start to bring the power and the intention around that. Um, and it's just such a, a beautiful way of uplifting, nurturing. You get to ask me um, questions of, you know, clarifying different things or, you know, where you're feeling stuck. And I answer that through my live Q and A videos, uh, normally done on a Wednesday as well, which is a really powerful way of the group uh, because generally what's resonating for one person will resonate for lots of people as well. Good morning, Leslie. Loads of love to you, gorgeous. Um, lovely to have you on here. And Ashley, I'm about to jump off. So if you've just jumped on, jump back, watch the replay. I go through um, all of those reasons as to why you may be feeling stuck. Um, one of the other reasons I just want to mention really quickly um, that can keep us stuck is often not taking personal responsibility for where we're actually currently at or what we're actually experiencing. And this is when we're so focused on somebody else's behavior instead of stepping into and actually asking ourselves, who do I need to become and what are the actions I need to take today if I was truly loving myself, if I was truly taking full responsibility for my own happiness and how I get to live my life every day. And that's a powerful, powerful question to ask yourself as well. Um, it can definitely be one of the other reasons is just not taking radical responsibility for how you're living your life and again that comes back a little bit to that internal external necessity that I spoke about um, but it's just another really key point uh, to keep uh, as a clear reminder. Now if you feel inspired or resonated to look at and to jump into the inner circle mastermind definitely come play with us. Um, we uh, yeah really um, 
is just such a great place to hang out and to develop that beautiful peer group of women that are all elevating. They're all on their own personal development journey. Um, so I'll pop the link below for you as well. But for now, have an amazing rest of your day. Uh, and like I said, if you've just jumped on, please feel free to jump back, watch the replay from the start and uh, have a fantastic weekend. Loads of love to you all. Hey, Jackie, you might just want to jump back to the replay, honey. I'm just signing off now. Have a great day. Bye, guys.